going to be setting up a couple sheds today. Uh, these are metal sheds, got on Amazon fairly cheap, somewhere between three and four hundred dollars a piece. Uh, I've never used them before, so I'm not sure exactly the quality, but we'll find out. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a structure for the floor. I'm going to put it on some uh, concrete blocks to keep it up off the ground and out of the water. And then I'm going to assemble these on top of that. First step is going to be to figure out the exact dimensions of the base of this shed so I can build the frame uh, to the correct size. After I get the frame built uh, for the floor, then I can uh, place my concrete blocks in the correct position to support the floor correctly. So this shows a width of 89.8 inches and a depth of 71.5 inches. I'm going to hope that's accurate and I'm going to build my floor base according to those measurements. So 89.8 inches turns out to be about 7 foot 5 inches and 3 quarters. So I've got, I'm using uh, 2x6's for the, the structural framework of the floor and I've got four of those cut because I'm doing two sheds so I've got the front and back uh, for both of those done. The depth from front to back on the shed uh, in the direction says 71.5 inches and that comes out to 5 feet 11 and a half inches. So I'm going to cut my uh, center supports for that and um, I need to factor in the front and back because I want it an overall depth of 5 foot 11 and a half inches. Since my front and back supports together are three inches, uh, the pieces that I cut to go in between those is going to be five feet eight and a half inches. So here's the framework for one of my floors. The uh, joists are about uh, 15 inches on center. Not exact, but pretty close and uh, it's good enough for my shed floor. I just have one more to build and then um, I will start uh, positioning the concrete blocks to place them. So I've got a problem with my uh, flooring and my uh, concrete posts. Uh, there's actually not enough space between the sidewalk and the retaining wall to fit the, uh, the, con the pier blocks and the flooring. Uh, because the pier blocks come out at an angle, the uh, framework of the flooring needs to go in the middle, so it pushes it back from the concrete from the sidewalk and from the wall. So altogether the space is too small. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get creative and figure out a way to make them fit. So I have a couple options. Uh, I was gonna take these bricks that I have and put them underneath the edge just to keep the uh, frame up off the ground. But I think using these blocks will keep the shed more stable in place when I get them put up. Um, so I'm, my first attempt to uh, find a solution for this is to trim these, uh, these blocks down. I do happen to have this gigantic tile saw which I've never used. Somebody was giving it away so I picked it up and it looks like I will be able to um, hopefully get these either cut down all the way or cut to a point to where I can uh, get them to fit one way or another. So this is what I'm going to try to do first. Trim the blocks down with this giant tile saw. got this cut all the way around as much as we can. The center is still connected. So I got a couple different bars here, a little hammer, and I'm going to try to get in there and crack this uh, thin layer off.
We'll start with this guy. is our new block. Unfortunately I've got 12 of these to do but that should definitely give us some extra space. Probably at least, uh, no shit, hopefully it's enough if I get these done on both sides but we'll give them a shot. So I've got all my blocks cut and I'm ready to start uh, digging the, the rest of the holes, getting them placed and making sure they're level so they can support my floor. Got my blocks installed for the first floor. A couple of the uh, front pieces here snapped off, which is not a big deal. I was thinking about taking the rest off just to make a match. Uh, I'm not really relying on those for support or anything, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, made sure it's level, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, uh, some of this extra dirt and rocks and backfill around these posts so that they stay where I have them put. We got both floors built, or the structure built, and on the concrete piers. So, uh, next step is to start assembling the sheds. Uh, since I do have to screw into the back of these and there's no clearance between the back of the floor frame and the concrete wall, I'm going to have to pull these frames up off the posts, pull them out a little bit, uh, raised up on something which I haven't figured out yet get the sheds built and then put them back on the pier blocks so that should be fun so the measurements and the instructions is pretty exact I've got the outside of my frame here even with my support it just barely hangs over because I uh, didn't build them exactly I was just a little bit off uh, eighth of an inch or so um, which is fine because I want the water to be able to uh, flow off the edge without getting the wood too wet um, the thing that I'm going to change about my original plans is I was going to build the shed build the, this metal frame on my wooden frame and then put the floor inside so it would be on top of this uh, in order to keep water out well this um, edge right here kind of needs support and I could go through and put another 2x6 or 2x4 or something along the entire uh, inside of this to support that edge. But I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and put my plywood down and then I'll put this frame on top of it like it was uh, designed to do. And uh, then I can either uh, paint all the edges of my wood out here on the outside or leave it and I'm I'm pretty sure that the water is not going to be an issue uh, with this size of uh, floor structure underneath the frame. It should be fine, but I'll, I'll end up painting it anyway just to be sure. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and take this metal frame off. It's just sitting on here and uh, set that to the side and I'll get my uh, plywood cut and installed and then put this back on. Got the plywood installed on my flooring frame and I will continue to put the shed together. So in following the steps, um, I've looked at, through the instructions and haven't seen where it says to mount the frame to the flooring, but I went ahead and I mounted the front uh, piece on there just to keep it in place. I've left the other sides um, unattached for now. I wanna get, make sure that I have all my sides and stuff screwed on correctly and everything is straight before I uh, fasten that to the floor. So the next steps, after the flooring frame uh, is to put these corners on, which I've done. Um, and I'll continue to uh, follow the instructions, uh, most likely putting on uh, the rest of the sides first. So far, I've been able to do the install by myself. Um, there is a little breeze, which makes um, installing some of these trickier when you're trying to put the screws in the bottom and the top is blowing around. Uh, so you may need some help with that, but uh, if there's no breeze or a, a little breeze, then you should be able to accomplish at least this much by yourself. So 
So the next steps uh, were to put in the uh, framework for the top. So I got that in front and back and both sides. Next step is going to be to start installing the side panels. So I got all the sides on, top frame is on, and uh, I don't need to access the back lower part anymore. I've got the screws all put in there, so I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, slid off my temporary uh, base and put down onto its block so I can finish uh, putting it together. Got a little too dark yesterday, so I went ahead and uh, stopped working and uh, back out here today. I should be able to get this shed finished up and get the second one completed. So I'm gonna get started where I left off. I've got these two pieces for the roof uh, bolted together and uh, they're ready to be installed. So we've got these pieces on here for the roof and the next step is gonna to be to work on the main support for the roof. So we got the center roof support done. Uh, the next step is gonna to be to install this in between tops of these two uh, peaks right here. We've got one end of the center support uh, connected on this end, but since I am working by myself, I did find it necessary to rest the other end on top of a ladder so I could secure this. Uh, now that this is in, I'll go ahead and secure the other side. So it looks like the main support beam across the middle is too short. Uh, there are two other support beams that are going to go halfway in between the middle and the edges of the roof and they're going to go the same direction as a support beam those also look too short this is the way the beams are connected there's two pieces and four holes that uh, you put bolts through to connect these i've tried sliding this apart more so they're only connected on the end bolts which isn't very stable and that's too long next section down to where they um, have it in the instructions makes them too short. This is how they're supposed to connect. They uh, go right on either side of this center piece and bolt through. Uh, that is correct. And at this other side, <coughs> it is too short. I've tried pulling these in on both sides and um, tried looking at different ways to make this longer, looking for things that I've done wrong, um, can't seem to find any. These are bolted on exactly where they belong. These two end pieces can't be flipped around. This is the only way they go on. And so I am trying to figure out if I missed a step or missed a piece somewhere. The only thing that would make sense is to have uh, something on here that would shift this top piece in uh, about an inch on front and back and so I will look for that piece I don't think it's there I think they've uh, made a mistake on these or drilled the holes in the wrong spots the top has little holes in it for the roof I imagine that's for the roof panels that are going to go on and so what I've been thinking of doing is unbolting these in the center stretching these apart redrilling the holes and bolting them together but the uh, roof holes are going to be out of alignment so I may have to redrill those if I can't find a real solution for this. The front and back on these pieces are installed the same way. They've got a slight overhang which looks like uh, how it should be. I can't imagine these being scooted back somehow either over this or somehow in this. Doesn't make any sense to me. And the holes wouldn't line up anyway. Mounting this onto the frame here, the holes are pre-drilled and um, they are where they're supposed to be as far as I can tell. So it looks like I figured out what the problem was with the uh, middle support beam. Looks like I most likely put it together incorrectly and I'm gonna show you uh, what I did wrong. This is one end, you've got, uh, I don't know, probably three or four inches right there. This is the middle that I connected. 
probably about seven or eight inches there and then the end another uh, few inches so I think what I did is connect the uh, ends together in the middle instead of the middles and uh, that should give us the extra length that we're looking for so I'll get these all unbolted and bolted back together correctly so apparently if you put it together correctly it works correctly um, I have my beam put back together the way it's supposed to be and it reaches both sides so I've got it uh, bolted up on each side fits perfect all right I've got all three roofing supports in they're all tightened up ready to go for the roof Get one half of the roof on I left the uh, screws loose just to make sure I made it all the way down and, and all the holes aligned so now that everything is lined up it looks like the shed is uh, pretty square so I shouldn't have any problems with the other side I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the screws on these since all the holes are lined up and uh, it's gonna be hard to get to when I get the other side of the roof on so I've got the rest of the roof on all the screws are tightened down looks like the next next step is gonna be the trim around the outside edges so I've got all the roofing done. I've got the strips around the edges and the little plastic caps for everything. That's all completed, so I'm going to start working on the doors. So I got one of the doors put together. Uh, the directions say to put both of them together, then put them on, but I'm going to get this one out of my way. I'll go ahead and install it on the shed now, and then I'll work on the second one. Here's the one completed door. This one's going to go on the left side opening so we'll go ahead and get that put in right now so I got the second door on which is the final piece of the shed the shed is complete uh, it took me by myself nine hours to complete um, I did learn a couple things I, I did fight with uh, putting a piece together wrong and that took some time uh, taking some of the, uh, the plastic covering off of some of these parts was pretty difficult. I probably spent about two hours uh, on a couple different, uh, the more complicated parts, uh, just, just peeling the plastic off of them. So um, I think ultimately it'll probably take a person by themselves about nine hours. Um, if you have experience, uh, it'll probably take you a little less. If you have a second person, it's definitely helpful, especially if it's windy, you'll need a second person. Um, I have one more shed to put together. It's already pretty dark, it's only 5.30, but uh, I'm contemplating uh, working on the second one. Uh, may have to put it off till next weekend, but we'll see. Thanks for watching.